What's going on, everyone? I uh, hope you all had a great Thursday as we're about to approach our weekend and get going here. There's some things to talk about, including some very active weather potentially next week. I'm talking about the entire week. We have the chance for multiple storm systems, a powerful cold front that could be introduced just before Halloween that clears the entire East Coast. You know, I had somebody in the comments ask, does this make it to the Bahamas? Well, it certainly looks like it possibly can. This looks like a cold front that could clear the entire state of Florida. Uh, so potentially maybe a nice, cool Halloween for everyone on the eastern U.S. It's always cool to have a little bit of a chilly Halloween. It just, it just makes it feel like this time of the year. So there is a chance for a big-time cold front we've been talking about for several days. But um, with the cold front, there is a chance of a powerful storm system that could bring some very wet weather. It's been very dry for a lot of areas. Some areas are seeing rain and some severe storms tonight, including a potential tornado in the Ohio in the state of Ohio. Um, so uh, definitely some active weather ongoing right now as a weak cold front is uh, pushing its way through the eastern U.S. Uh, that will reinforce the dry air for tomorrow. There's also a severe weather threat tomorrow for the eastern areas of the Carolinas. I'm going to talk about that also just briefly. Uh, so if you guys have not subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button. Like the video if you like it. Growth has been pretty slow. Um, it's just been a slow month. October's a transition month, so not a lot of crazy things happen in October unless you're talking about the 2020 hurricane season when we had hurricane after hurricane. I'm also going to talk about the tropics at the tail end of this video. Uh, the GFS will not uh, do away with the development of what would be Wanda uh, here in the mid to long term. So let's get going here. A lot to discuss. I'm not going to stay stick very long on each topic, but there is a few, quite a few things to talk about. First off, tomorrow it's going to warm up for areas all the way up into the Carolinas and almost Virginia. Very warm day, kind of like today, but with probably less clouds. Uh, the whole state of Florida will be very warm. Uh, it'll be warm across the deep, deep south, areas well, well into the south and humid into Texas, very warm into Texas. Uh, but as we get into uh, tomorrow night, a weak cold front moves through, reinforces that cool air. And by the time most of us wake up Saturday morning, we're waking back up into the 40s and 50s for a lot of areas in the southeast. Unfortunately for you guys in Texas and Louisiana, Oklahoma, it looks like this is more of a trough digging just exclusively for the southeast and uh, these are temperatures not dew points too so this would make for a beautiful day for mainly eastern areas of the south meaning the southeast and the mid-atlantic uh, texas and florida this front does not make it to you guys and it's more oriented going this way so it's going to make for a beautiful day across the carolinas georgia and most of alabama and a good portion of Mississippi and then everywhere points north will be in the 70s even 60s as far and getting the north and a cool pretty cool weekend across the northeast as we get into uh, Sunday morning another coolish morning but very warm to the west um, and then it warms up everywhere big sharp boundary setting up from the uh, Ohio Valley to the northern areas of the mid-Atlantic and northeast but uh, you know this is for Sunday high temperatures around about 80s uh, definitely warms back up. Uh, we look at this, we look at dew points, and we can see here in the short term, this is dry air. So we're getting into, this would be early afternoon tomorrow. By this time, uh, the dryer has pushed into Tennessee, large portions of uh, Arkansas, well, the entire state of Arkansas, large portions of Mississippi, a little bit of Louisiana temporarily, um, and then Mississippi, Alabama, and getting into Georgia, and then the Carolinas. This will continue to move throughout the evening and will reinforce and what will make for a nice uh, weekend for the most part. But there is a big surge of moisture riding into the western areas of the deep south and just south central U.S. where it will be a lot more uncomfortable with the dew points. There's a big boundary setting up here, which will provide a actually a severe weather threat as you have a warm sector riding up here. This will provide a little bit of instability and it will be a severe weather threat right here as there is a sharp boundary between very dry air and moist air and uh, a big time cold front setting up that will eventually drive in the entire eastern U.S. Um, so that's there is actually a day four severe weather risk of 15% chance which I'm about to show you here in a second. 
There is also a slight risk of severe storms tomorrow for the eastern, north, mainly North Carolina. Very small portion right here. Chance of severe weather. We'll take a look at the HRRR model. And moving forward here, uh, a weakening line of storm, storms will try to make its way into the mountains tonight. And it was actually doing so right now. This will continue to weaken. Uh, maybe some showers and storms will break containment east of the mountains into the Carolinas and Georgia. Um, but then we get into tomorrow evening, afternoon and evening. And you notice a little bit some showers and storms fire up ahead of the cold front where some warm air is able to build here. Um, some of these could have some damaging winds, but uh, I'm not expecting anything crazy. But some strong to severe storms are possible for the eastern North Carolina. Raleigh's Point East um, could see it uh, for sure. Um, looking at the grand scheme of things, we're looking at the GFS. Moving forward here in time, we get into Sunday morning. We're getting to the early part of the weekend. Right here in this time frame, we could have a little bit of severe weather right into here. And we look at the Storm Prediction Center. It shows that large area of a 15% chance. This includes portions of Arkansas, even an area of Texas, Oklahoma, um, Kansas, and a large portion of Missouri. Um, this is for Sunday. So normally when you see the 15% chance at day four, that normally means you're at least going to have a slight risk of severe storms for that day. Um, now that can go that can downtrend or uptrend for right now i'm not expecting any kind of big time severe weather event that that could change but right now there's going to be a lot of energy right into here that could provide some severe weather as far as the severe weather you know as far as what's going to happen the derma thermodynamics and things like that in place we'll know a little bit more as we get into tomorrow and saturday but right now i'm not anticipating in uh, you know, a, an outbreak of storms or anything. But moving forward, this system will basically ride the jet northern stream up here. Uh, this will bring a pretty chilly rain across areas of um, the northeast, even mid-Atlantic, northern mid-Atlantic into Monday, into Tuesday. Uh, maybe some higher elevation snow. This will get off the coast. And this is when our big time cold front sets up. Dry air is funneling behind this. I'll show you that in a second. And this will be a big time east coast um, storm system that clears the entire east coast has potential to bring rain to everybody now will this bring severe weather right now I'm not seeing parameters severe weather parameters are, are really a big time threat this could be a big time heavy rain threat but if we could get a warm sector that pops up way up here into the Carolinas then we can have some good low-level moisture and some you know this could definitely be a negatively tilted trough that would provide a nice low-level jet and we just have to see what's hap what's going to happen here. But there's a lot of things to figure out. This is still nearly a week out. But I really think this is going to be a big weather maker for areas of the eastern U.S. And will introduce a significant pattern change to potentially cooler weather. Um, but this gets moves through, you know, and then it tries to become a full-fledged nor'easter or something. and dumps a lot of rain, but this, that gets pretty far out. And then the atmosphere reloads, and we get into about 9 to 10 hour, hours out. And a big bowling ball moves down. This is a deep digging trough influenced. Basically, this is almost polar Pacific air moving all the way from this region out here. This would, if this was to happen, now this is 10 days out, this would be Halloween weekend. This would be Halloween e afternoon, evening, actually. This would bring some flurries to the high country of North Carolina, maybe a northwest uh, flow event, uh, Roll Mountain, I'm talking about you in North Carolina. This will bring the first snows for certain areas in the southern Appalachian Mountains. So I have to watch this. It's a big time. Uh, this would bring its own cold air in the upper levels of the atmosphere and can pump out some snow. We'll have to watch this. We'll see how this trends and gets into the medium to short term. Um, uh, but we're, as far as what the dew points look in response to that, Obviously, we have the push of dry air right here, and I think we warm up substantially in the south um, into early next week, substantially as in anywhere from Texas to, to Carolinas could see temperatures well into the 80s with some uncomfortable conditions. Now, there will become try to be a wedge that kind of situates itself in here and tries to provide some relief for the Carolinas and to Georgia, but this will erode quickly. But... I think next week in general, I think most of the mid-Atlantic up and well up into the northeast, you will remain very dry as far as a dry air mass and very cool and fall-like. Um, and then the big dull cold front moves through. These are dew points. And this is very dry air. This is uh, even more of a powerful cold front than the last one we had this past weekend. This moves through, clears the entire eastern U.S., brings dew points as low as the 30s all the way to the southern tip. Of Florida this thing makes it all the way to the northern Bahamas 
and uh, completely is a complete East Coast clear and uh, brings basically the whole second half of the week next week. Very fall like and, and cool and chilly. Then it gets reinforced. And this is getting into La La Land or Fantasy Land, but it gets reinforced by big some big time Arctic air that gets released. And this would be a significant cold front for this time of the year that will get reinforced right around the Halloween time. So some interesting times ahead. It, it's really difficult to figure out because we're starting to get into the first couple of days in November. But um, definitely a pattern to, to, to really try to figure out here. Now, this is what I'm talking about. We get in early next week. It warms up big time. You got 80s pushing 90 degrees in South Carolina, um, and you know warm day again Wednesday. But you notice these cooler these are temperatures, not dew points. These cooler temperatures are getting closer and closer, and then chillier air mass gets in place. You get back to more weather like we saw earlier this week across the eastern U.S. Uh, high temperatures in the 60s and 70s, um, and then this gets reinforced by a big time chilly air mass that brings 40s all the way into Florida and sub-freezing temperatures into the higher elevations. Um, and then high temperatures in the 50s as we get into our November 1st. We introduce November very chilly in the eastern U.S., but this is very far out, a lot to figure out. But I will mention the Euro does show the same storm system for next week. Here it comes, a lot of rain as we get into mid to early next week. Um, you look at the GFS. Uh, we'll talk about the tropics briefly, as you can tell. Um, <clears throat> here it is. Shows this storm system building as we get into late next week. It has showed it for the last several runs, guys. I'm backing up every time I do a, every time you see the screen blink. That is a run prior to the next one. So <clears throat> it's consistently showing a storm system developing around uh, the Lesser Antilles, uh, Puerto Rico, places like that. And the latest GFS has this thing developing to a tropical storm and just kind of getting meandering out there. Cold, freaking cold, cold fronts are keeping it anywhere. It's keeping it basically away from the mainland in the lower 48. But it'll be interesting to watch to see if this tropical system develop. One reason why I don't think it will is because the <coughs> as consistent as the operational GFS has been, the ensembles has been just as consistent with not being very excited about this threat at all. Uh, you notice there's just not a big time uh, lightening of the colors, which means lowering of the pressures. So I, I don't think this is going to be significant. It, even if it does form, there's no way it's going to affect the lower 48 with frequent cold fronts coming and basically keeping this storm system away. So that's all I got. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm going to the mountains tomorrow with my wife. So I'm trying, probably going to have you a nice fall foliage video tomorrow uh, to switch things up. So thank you all for the amazing support. Y'all have a blessed night. Stay safe.